Well, here we are. It is Friday, uh, April 18th, 2024, and uh, we're in Belize, as many of you know. We're having a great time. Uh, we were out on a boat the other day. We went through all the islands and so forth. We're going to a soccer game tonight uh, run by somebody we know down here who lives here and uh, doing a bunch of great things. And yesterday we were rafting uh, in the Audubon Preserve up in, uh, it's called the Jaguar uh, Reservation um, uh, up in, in the mountains. Uh, it's absolutely spectacular. And uh, I'm sitting on the, uh, on the veranda here uh, overlooking the beach. Um, and we're taking sort of an easy day and then we're going out uh, later on. Anyway, I want to talk about uh, what's been going on in the last week in uh, uh, the Asian art market. It's been sort of interesting. A bunch of things have happened. And as luck would have it, I, I actually bought a few things at, at the Leland Little sale, which I was very pleased about. We'll talk about that and uh, the, the, um, uh, some of the bargains that can be had here and there. Uh, you know, leave a bid. Um, and I left a bid and uh, found out this morning, lo and behold, I got a few lots. And uh, one of them I'm extremely pleased with, and we'll talk about that. Anyway, the first thing I want to talk about is the, uh, uh, quickly, just going over to the Sotheby's results from uh, Hong Kong. Uh, as you know, the Edward Chow collection was uh, some of the pieces from the Edward Chow story. Uh, it came up for auction, and it was very successful. I don't, I don't know if you followed it, but uh, um, it was all but one lot sold, and it probably sold post-auction at this point. But uh, overall, it was phenomenal success. We'll go through some of the uh, results here, and uh, you'll see what I mean. Many pieces went far over estimate. Um, this was that uh, very fine quadruple uh, vase uh, seal mark, Yongchen mark and period, estimated at uh, 1.2 to 1.5 million Hong Kong, ended up selling for 1.7 million Hong Kong. Uh, very rare type. Uh, there are a lot of copies of these on the market, so you want to be extremely careful. Um, they, 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 they turn up here and there. Um, this is a, a very, very nice set, uh, and of course with the Chow provenance, it has a great deal to do with the power of the, what the piece will bring. Uh, a beautiful example, but I will say the other sales um, that they had too, all did well. All of them, did, I, think, I did, think, did quite well, and there was one sale that we're going to come back to later and talk about post-auction offers because they had fairly high estimates, but I noticed the number of the lots sold for way below the low estimate which means that there were nominal, the reserves were, were what they felt they were worth, and it was one of those cases where the reserves were very low, and I think uh, across the board, and it's a, it's a good way to, to make an offer, and we're going to do a thing on making offers at auctions uh, uh, very soon, um, post-auction, which I think many, but a couple of people suggested it, and I think it's a great idea on, on, on doing that, all right? So at any rate, uh, uh, this, this, this lot did very, very well. And then moving along over to this, this really fine clear loom garlic mouth seal mark, chin lung mark and period. Um, it was estimated very modestly for some reason, 20 to 30,000 Hong Kong. Um, I thought at the time when I saw it, I said, gee, that's awfully low. <laughs> uh, because these typically bring a lot of money. I'm not sure why the estimate was that low, but in the end, it ended up selling for 462,000 Hong Kong dollars. Um, that, that works out to uh, about uh, 50 to 60,000 roughly. Uh, right, uh, yeah, about sixty thousand U.S. instead of two or three thousand U.S. I'm not, I, I, that, that estimate really befuddled me. I don't know why they had that, uh, and the audience clearly disagreed. So, and when the audience disagrees, you find out what what the consensus is, and often the consensus is a little more accurate than maybe one person in a department that sets a, sets an estimate. And then this went through the roof, and and this had a really this had also had a very low estimate. It was one of these uh, guan glazed double gourd type vases with a square base on it. Uh, they dated it to 17th, 18th century. And I suspect it's because a lot of people thought it was much older than um, uh, 17th or 18th century. It has to be that. It was estimated at 100 to 150,000 Hong Kong or you know, eight to $12,000 US. And it ended up going for about, uh, uh, about 100 and works out to about 130 or 40,000 US, roughly 10 times its high estimate. Um, uh, pretty close to it, so uh, it may have been a swing piece, um, and that happens. That happens. Uh, people people look at things and they disagree um, uh, on, on, on what the auction house says. The people do disagree sometimes, even with Sotheby's and Christie's, and sometimes they're right. And maybe Sotheby's is sometimes right, or Christie's is sometimes. Right. It's a back and forth. It's a matter of opinion, and uh, opinions, as they say, do vary a lot. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it was a glorious piece, and it, and it took off and did extremely well. And then over to this, the Celadon Bowl. We talked, I think we talked about this one in the preview. I thought it was awfully attractive. A Yon Dynasty uh, example, estimated at just 50 to 70,000 uh, Hong Kong dollars, ended up selling for 300 and, uh, 
30,000 Hong Kong. So again, uh, it went about about six, ti uh, six times, six times, about five times overestimate. That 330,000 Hong Kong, um, or uh, what does that work out to? About $40,000 US. But it was a splendid example, beautifully potted, very even glaze, uh, very good color in the glaze. The Celadon glaze uh, color in this was exceptional. And uh, uh, the audience uh, spoke and um, it, did, it did just fine. And then, of course, there was this. This was sort of the main event of it. This was the one that you may remember Nicholas Chow had seen as a child. Nicholas Chow, just as a reminder, is the head of the Sotheby's Asian Art Department, and he's the grandson of Edward Chow, who, who, who was a very famous, very uh, highly esteemed dealer in uh, China, um, you know, a legend, a legend in, in his day. When they, when his, when they, years ago, they had this auction at Sotheby's of the Edward Chow collection, and they put out these three beautiful, very hard to get now books um, on, on the, what he had in his own collection at the time of his passing. And um, this, this particular vase and all these pieces were sold, as a reminder also, uh, back in, uh, I think it was around 1969, and Ed, Ed, Edward Chow sold them to a British uh, uh, collector who was unnamed at this point. And Nicholas Chow came across this vase about 12 years ago at Sotheby's that had been brought in for an appraisal. So obviously the, somebody in the family or people in the family had inherited this collection and they wanted to have an idea what it's worth. And uh, Nicholas immediately recognized it and said, I've seen that one, but I've seen that before. And he went and looked it up. And sure enough, it was the one that his grandfather, his grandfather had sold, which is sort of an amazing story for, for him. It must have really been a powerful thing to see. And uh, it did extremely well. It was estimated at 8 to 12 million Hong Kong dollars, or uh, roughly a 1 to 1.5 million dollars in US currency. Ended up selling for 20 million, went well over the estimate. Uh, so it ended up selling for about two and a half million dollars U.S. But it was a beautiful piece of po uh, pottery or ceramic, uh, very fabulous glaze, all the things that you want, and uh, d uh, you know, legend. Uh, and it did great. It just did great. It was a beautiful, beautiful piece. And then this, the uh, d double handled uh, Lung Kwan Celadon mallet vase with the fish, fish handles on it. A fairly rare type. And as I recall, this had. I thought. I think this might have had a repair or. Something to it? No, it didn't. No, it didn't. This isn't the one. It's another one. I, I saw another one that had a little bit of damage to um, one of the fins on the fish. But uh, this was a, a really fine example. And notice the color. The color on this was really great. This canuda green, pretty much, um, which is the, one of the most desirable colors you can have on, um, on celadons. And it was estimated at uh, just 150 to 200,000 Hong Kong dollars. And it went way over that estimate, um, uh, bringing four and a half times the high estimate selling at 889,000 Hong Kong dollars, or about $100,000 in the US. And then the last thing that sold, I'm gonna show this just because I like this so much, it was a, a painting by Zhu Gao, and uh, it, was not, it wasn't an extremely rare, extremely valuable painting, but it was an extremely beautiful painting. And uh, it was done during the Qing Dynasty, probably the early 19th century, I guess, was it, were, were his dates. It was estimated at 10 to 15,000 Hong Kong, which is very, you know, very modest. You, you're only talking about, uh, um, 1500 to you know two thousand dollars, and it did great. It ended up selling for 127 thousand um, Hong Kong, or around um, what does that work out to about about 15 thousand U.S. But it was a beautiful painting, beautiful colors. The colors on this were really exceptional, and the details, the peaches and the trees, and the beautiful ladies in the boat and so forth. Um, you know, very classical. Love the red-headed cranes added in here on the on the side of the hill. And uh, it did just great. So uh, uh, bravo on uh, Sotheby's for that sale. They, they did very well. And we'll touch on some of the other items, too, because they had some other great things that, that were, in, were in several auctions. And uh, across the board, I thought they did really, really well. All right. And uh, by the way, I apologize if the lighting here is a little fouled up. My camera is having a heck of a hard time trying to read the light because the light outside is so brilliant and bright. It's a little dark under here. So I may appear a little bit uh, uh, out of detail, so to speak. But it's uh, too nice a day to be indoors, I'm afraid. So here we are. Uh, over to this. This was the lot I bought at Leland Little. And uh, it, was a, it was a group of uh, three 12-inch Satsuma bowls. These were big bowls. And um, I left a bit on them thinking, well, maybe I'll get them. I just, I just love the look of these. And these two are not really a pair, but they're extremely similar. And uh, th these have this very sort of rustic, sort of unusual rustic glaze on the back. I want to get to the backs of these. Um, there you go. It's good. They've got these little felt pads on the feet, which, which, is, which is probably good. Uh, and there's the back of this plate. One of them has a hairline in it, but I don't really care. There's the hairline. Um, and I, I just left the bit on it. I looked at them. I said, boy, those are really nice looking. And um, checked them out. 
they look fine otherwise, and I left a bid on them, and I got them for basically, uh, I don't know what the buyer's premium is going to be on it, probably about, about uh, 30 or 40 dollars, 30, 40 dollars, maybe 165 all in for the three bowls, and they'll, they'll get them shipped up uh, from there. Um, 165 dollars for, for three of them, for three beautiful satsuma pieces, and I thought I wouldn't get them. I, le I left. I left sort of a middle in, uh, a, a bid on. I just went through the auction and left a bunch of little bids here and there. I'm, I'm sort of in vacation mode and not paying too much attention, but I, I like them enough. And uh, they did great, and I, 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 I feel very happy about these. These. I have a wall. I'm going to put these on. These are not. Gonna, I'm not reselling these. Uh, I just like them. And uh, as, as many of you know, I have some, you know, Kutani and Satsuma and other pieces at home, as well as Chinese. So. I thought this would be very nice to add to it, so I, I did. I'm, I'm extremely pleased with that. Uh, and there were some other pieces in the Leland Little Sale uh, uh, that, that, did, that did fine, that brought more. There were some good, very good buys for Kutani buyers. If you're one of the Kutani buyers out there, I hope you paid attention to that sale. We posted it on the uh, on the drop down on the homepage at Bitamount um, um, for a few days, just so you could get a, see some of them. But there were some very nice uh, lots of Kutani, eight, late 18th, early 19th century, mid 19th century Kutani, Edo to Meiji period, and uh, uh, some of them went very reasonably. And so I hope uh, I hope some of you got them. All right, and this is just a reminder that this is that sale that's coming up at Sunburst Auctions. It's coming up in just a couple of days. It's coming up on the 20th. This was that book auction that had all those great, great reference books that we talked about last week. And I should I, sh I should have mentioned that there are also some objects in this sale as well. And they all look pretty good. They all look pretty good, I must say. Um, uh, I, I think uh, that obviously these come from who, whoever owned these, uh, many of these books had some of these pieces and they put them into the sale. There's some very nice little sets, uh, 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 Japanese pieces in there. There's some early pottery that is Chinese. There's a bunch of figures and so forth. So do check it out. And of course, they're all the good books. And uh, the, some of those books are terrific. And add, buy some, add them to your library. Um, uh, I, I, I can't say it enough. I, I think it's very, very important. This is one of the pieces that's in the sale. I just loved it. It's a carved. It's probably um, uh, maybe, uh, uh, I don't know what kind of wood this would be. I, I can't tell by out here in the, in the light what it is, but um, there's some sort of Chinese hardwood. Uh, but this beautiful Guan Yin, the soft eyes looking downward and so forth. And uh, it's, it's, it's probably a, a mid, mid 8th, 19th century or so, but a very nice quality, very good detail. Probably, I may have, it's probably boxwood, I would guess, but it's hard to tell. All right, and there's also this, this little libation cup is in the sale. It's a nice one. Uh, again, 18th, early 19th century, probably. Uh, it's got the flowers on. It's done like the Ming Dynasty cups that we've talked about before. So if you're into these, these little carved wood cups and so forth, I, they caught my eye because I, I like wooden things so much. Um, you might want to uh, take a look at those. The Sunburst Sale is an interesting little auction. There's also this, a pen rest made out of pottery. Uh, it's also, it also appears to be a 19th century piece with monkeys on it. So if you like monkeys, um, there, there's the thing you can go after. Yeah, we were, oh, by the way, we were up in the Amazon, the other, up in the, not the Amazon, but up in the, uh, um, the Mayan um, areas, up in the mountains the other day, and there were monkeys uh, running around. <laughs> It's pretty much fun. We didn't see any jaguars. We were hoping to see some jaguars, but they 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 avoid people um, uh, very much. They're, they're leery of them, so if they'll see you long before you see them. All right. Now over to uh, some eBay results. Uh, it was a pretty good week. There were some good results. One of them was this uh, this uh, scroll weight that was uh, being sold by uh, 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 Jay Gart's uh, Limited over in London. They had a number of things that I liked. And one of them was this, and it brought just about what we sort of talked about what it would bring last week. It brought $792, uh, but it was a nice example. It was three or four inches wide, had a nice surface on it, lots of legitimate looking wear, um, and a very sort of charming thing. Um, and, and maybe one of you got it. I don't know. If you, if you get some of these things, um, comment and, and let me know which, which things you buy here and there, um, because I'm always curious what other people collect. Um, I know what a lot of you collect because we get the inquiries and so forth. We did, oh, we did a video today. On, um, on an inquiry I got um, from one of our uh, 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 auction uh, preview inquiry folks um, a, few, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I recorded it before I left uh, to come here, but I didn't want to post it because, because he, was, he, he may have been bidding on some of those things. And, if you, if, if, and I, I didn't get a whole bunch of inquiries about these lots in particular, so if I get numerous inquiries, then I may talk about them a little before the sale because it's obvious a lot of people have seen them. But in this case, he was talking about things that nobody else had inquired about. 
And um, uh, so, so I did the video, and now that both of the auctions that covered these pieces um, has gone by. I, I posted the video today. Uh, so I hope you check that out. It's sort of interesting. All right, now over to uh, this. This is that coconut vase I liked a lot. I thought this was a terrific kind of coconut. Because of the shape, you don't see elongated coconut gourds very often um, because they're actually deformed. They're supposed to be round. And this one was elongated, which means it means that it was it was some, the coconut grew in a peculiar way, resulting in a peculiarly shaped uh, a gourd in the center. And uh, someone, somebody, in, uh, you know, in the 19th and early 19th century, they said 18th century, got it and carved it, and here it is. And it did very well. It brought $622. And if you follow coconut carvings, that's about four times what coconut carvings usually bring. But it was meticulously carved, lots of detail, a little bit of script on it. Uh, but nice low relief carving had these little this very gentle base put on the bottom. I think this was a dandy item. I really I really like this. Um, of course, I'm prejudiced because I like I like carving so much. So anyway, and uh, then over to this. This was uh, uh, Migalari had some things closed last week, and one of them was this is very nice Kangxi uh, uh, Femi Ver uh, Ewer with um, uh, cats on it or flu lions on it rather. Reticulated neck, this nice handle and so forth. And it did pretty well. It ended up selling for two thousand twenty-nine dollars U.S. or sixteen hundred and twenty-five pounds uh, in the in the UK. UK, uh, nice looking thing. Nice. So he always gets good looking. He often has very good looking things on here. All right. Now um, that's that's a list. And then uh, over here um, we have. Uh, let's see. This has oh this hasn't closed yet. This is a, a very a very nice plate that's being put up by a dealer. I'm not that familiar. It's a fairly new uh, eBay dealer. Uh, Royal um, Royal Delft Oh Royal Delft Blue. They're in the UK, and they typically sell I, I, they sell um, uh, English ceramics and so forth. Delftware, Royal Delft, and but they got some Chinese things, and they've got a bunch of things in here. And this ends in three days. Nice looking 18th century, uh, probably Kung Chi period. Uh, uh, but it's got a Chen Wai mark or something on the bottom. But nice looking plate. Of the uh, horse and riders chasing chasing uh, rabbits, hunting rabbits, uh, two hundred. It's up to two hundred and twelve dollars. It's got a ways to go yet. All right, and I'm a little out of order here because I had I, I've been doing this sort of on the fly, running around the kitchen this morning. <laughs> here and we and the Wi-Fi went out. We woke up overnight and the Wi-Fi went out, and it was because somebody was here in the building working overnight, and they moved the, the they moved the, they just moved the Wi-Fi transmitter a little about three feet. And we woke up this morning and there was no Wi-Fi on this side of the. Uh, of the, uh, of the of the place we're staying, it's, I guess it's just part of being being in, in you know in in, in uh, an area where they, they they do the best they can with the Wi-Fi, but it's a bit difficult here. All right. Anyway, um, this the skirt did very well. About a thousand and eight dollars. Beautiful color, meticulously done, and it was in exceptional condition. Um, if you're a silk collector, I hope you looked at this. This was in really, really fine condition. This was on the global, uh, on the uh, uh, Bitamount uh, newsletter page last week. Um, and uh, this was a very fine example. It looks like it's almost been just folded up and put away since the day it was made. That's, that's how good the condition of this thing was. It looked absolutely pristine. No fading, no nothing. Uh, and it sold for $1,008. If you follow silks, you know that's a pretty good price for a piece of silk. Uh, they, 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 these skirts typically sell on the, on, on sort of on the low end of around 200, 250, depending on condition, all the way up to maybe 650 or seven. This one went well beyond that, $1,008. But a nice example. And then this, the, uh, this was that. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> something shut off. I don't know something going on. Like I said, Wi-Fi and connections around here are a little bit crazy at times. Um, and then this sold the uh, the Pak Tong um, a warming dish. Uh, with the jade handles on it, very, very nicely done with a mixture of pewter and brass. Uh, ended up selling for $1,275. This was from Coast to Coast Antiques up in uh, um, uh, New Hampshire, uh, my friend Steve. And uh, again, another piece from Jig Arts uh, Limited over in the UK was this very nice uh, Buddha, um, 18th century, he felt probably about right, looks okay. Sold for $5,600 or about 4,500 pounds in the uh, UK. And then coming up this week on the newsletter, there's a couple of good things in there. And if, if you like sort of uh, some, some interesting bits, uh, there's some interesting lots in here. And one of them is this plate. At a glance, um, you're going to say, oh, it's Japanese Amari. It looks like Japanese Amari, but it's not. Okay, this is a, a Kung Chi piece. And this is the, this, the, this form is what they, when, they were, when they were learning to make uh, uh, colored Amari wares in the late 18th and early 19th up to the Meiji period, they copied these. 
And this is one of the originals. This is what the, 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 the old ones looked like that were done in China, sort of as prototypes during the Kangxi period, around between 700, 1700 and 1722. And uh, a wonderful example, it's getting up there. It's, it's got two days to go and it's up to $355 because I think a lot of people are recognizing what it is. And if you haven't seen these Kangxi examples that look so much like the much, much, much later Japanese Amari pieces, you, want, you might just see, even just to see it, go over and check it out. It'll be on the, on the newsletter page this week. And uh, this, this very, very nice 18th century, looks to be Qinlong period, blue and white dish with a ho-ho bird and giant peonies coming off of it. Nice looking plate. Uh, it's being sold by some really good stuff. Um, over in the UK, they get good things and periodically they have auctions as many of you know, they've been, they've been selling on eBay for a long time. They've got 7,000 feedbacks. Uh, it's very impressive. Um, and the, and, and they, have, they have a good reputation, so you, you might want to check that out. And then uh, this will also be on the, on the newsletter page here. This is a really neat piece of enamelware. You don't see these very often, and it's, it's a, a, a relief, um, uh, on, usually on copper, with enameling over it. And then they have these raised areas um, of uh, decorations and so forth, birds and ducks and so forth, and then they fill them in with enamels. So it's, uh, it's, it's all in relief. Uh, and I, I've always thought them to be extremely attractive and much, much, much undervalued. Uh, and they have these barb rims on them. Very, very interesting uh, pieces. This piece is about 12 inches in diameter. It's good size. Uh, it's only up to $112. It's got a couple of days left to go. It closes on Saturday, tomorrow. Uh, on Sunday, excuse me, it closes on Sunday. But if you like this kind of work, you like enamel work, um, you might want to look into this. The back of it has uh, it says blue enamel with some, some crackles in it and so forth, but um, it doesn't bother me because the front of the plate is so beautifully done. It's so beautifully done, and if you check it out, you'll see what I mean. Um, wonderful colors, I love the geese, the ducks, the, the, yeah, they're ducks, I guess, not geese, um, swimming around among flowers and lotus blossoms and so forth. Very, very attractive, I think. Very, very attractive. So check that out. And uh, then there's this nice Yongchen period, late Yongchen uh, familial rose dish. This is a type, as uh, many of you will recognize it. Um, they, they usually sell for pretty good money. Oh, there's a fly over here. Well, we're in the jungle, so I guess that's part of it. Uh, nice looking plate. Should bring two or $300. It closes in four days. Uh, I suspect it'll get up to 250 or 350 by the time it's done. It might not, though. I've noticed plates lately have been relative bargains. Um, there seems to be a lot of them coming out of the market, and when a lot of the, something comes out of the market, the prices may go down a little bit for you and make it a little bit easier to buy. And, and then, of course, there'll be a shortage later, and the prices will go back up again. But right now, um, there seems there seems to be a very good opportunity for buying very fine, well-decorated plates and dishes. They seem to be um, on the soft side as far as money goes. The quality is still great. The quality is still the same as they were when these plates would sell for four or five hundred dollars, but or six hundred. But uh, for right now, I think they've gotten a little bit soft. So uh, if you're collecting them, uh, now's the time to buy it. And then this, this is uh, 77 Pud out in Ohio. It's got a bunch of nice things up this week. There, a lot of them are gonna be on the newsletter page. One of them is this, it's a um, probably early 19th century seated figure of a Kuan Yin. But it's done very much in the, in the manner of the early Qing examples. But I think it's I think it's I think I agree with him on the dating, probably 19th century, but early 19th century. But nicely done, very fine details. Uh, it's about six or so inches tall, as I recall. Um, I want to double check that so I don't misspeak. Um, five and three quarter inches tall, just about just a little under six inches tall. Uh, but a nice example. It's up to $255. If, you, if you're planning on bidding on it, uh, assume it's probably going to bring somewhere in the five to $700 range, I suspect, by the time it's done. If people think it's an older one, it'll bring more. But um, we'll see. That often happens. And then over to this. This is, a, this is very nice. Um, he put up this um, sort of uh, 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 high shoulder, almost a May Ping form um, snuff bottle with um, underglazed red. This is a very, very nice example, and he's, I think he's dated it just about right, late 18th, early 19th century, but very nice color. The, 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 the red on it's not quite a cherry red, but it's a very good color. like that a lot. Very well done. And it's gotten a lot of interest. It's, it's still got uh, uh, six days to go, so it was probably a 10-day auction, and it's already up to almost $1,000. And expect it to go a bit more, uh, probably in the fourteen to eighteen hundred dollar range by the time it's done. But it's because the underglaze red is so good on it. That's that's really the the, the reason. 
All right, and then over here, uh, he's got some other things, some very nice snuff bottles. He's got this. These are mostly later 19th century examples, but it's three of them. They all look authentic. And this one on the right is rather interesting. It's got underglazed blue and underglazed red. The red looks good. The blue looks good. And it's got horses in it. So um, um, uh, if you like horses like I do, you got to buy it. you got to buy it. All right. I love, well, as you know, I, I like animals uh, when they're depicted on uh, Chinese objects. And the last thing I want to mention is this. Um, uh, th this is listed as an antique 18th century um, uh, uh, embroidery Chinese. It is not Chinese. If you've been looking at this, you have it on your watch list. This is not a Chinese embroidery if you saw it on, on eBay. It's a Japanese one, the way it's done um, and, uh, and so forth. So just keep that in mind. There's nothing wrong with it. It's absolutely lovely. It's a beautiful example, actually, and it's, but it is Japanese. And uh, if you're a Chinese buyer, you're probably not going to want it. But if you're a Japanese buyer, um, uh, you might want to check it out. You might want to check the thing out. All right, and that about covers it uh, 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 for, for the week so far. Um, and we're assembling a, a bunch of videos that we've taken down here, and we're going to put them all into, into something. Um, I've got a, we've got a few more I'm waiting because this weekend uh, we're going out, and there's going to be a whole bunch of things that we're going to do and uh, t traveling around uh, uh, tonight. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, and um, um, I've asked uh, everybody, you know, people who are with us and so forth, to put together some, some um, uh, sa save any videos you take because we're going to do them. Uh, we're going out on a, um, uh, one of our friends down here as a uh, as a, a, a 40 foot cigarette boat um, with three 350 horsepower engines on it, <laughs> and uh, it's unbelievable. It's a rocket ship, and it has this amazing sound system. We went out across off the tip of Placencia the other day, and it. Uh, because the family owns uh, a bunch of islands down here. They're, they're in the real estate business, and um, we, we're buying they have these 30 and 40 and 50 acre islands. Um, some of them are being developed, some of them they're saving for the next generation. Uh, it's an old uh, family that's been in Belize for a long time, and uh, we had a lot of fun with them when swimming out at a reef, and uh, uh, it was absolutely great, absolutely great day, great day. I got a little sunburn. I got, I got a pretty nasty sunburn on my shoulder because I didn't recognize that my shoulder was, when we were swimming, was so it was out of the water more than I thought, and, and it got uh, a little bit toasted there. Uh, but it's doing fine. It's, it's, not, it's not bad. Peeled a bit, and that, it's healing up nicely. So uh, all that. Anyway, that's it. Um, subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment. Um, give us a thumbs up. Do all that. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, Patreon subscribers uh, um, have been making some comments over in there in their, uh, on, the, on the commentary page. So if you, if you, if you, if you join Patreon to support the channel, I appreciate it. Um, and uh, that's about it. All right. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And uh, thanks for watching. And we'll see you soon. We'll see you all soon. Okay. Bye-bye.